Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Turbo712 and welcome to another Spool Me Up. So today's review is just going to be a quick fire review because I haven't got long with the car. So we're going to try and squeeze in everything that we can. And uh, so yeah, instead of me waffling on because I haven't got much time, let's go and take a look at what we're driving today. So as you can see guys, Fiesta ST2. Uh, it's a 1.6 litre turbocharged engine and it produces 182 horsepower as standard which in one of these little things <laughs> is pretty nippy so the overall shape i, I really like these little cars i think they look pretty cool and the ST version does look quite aggressive especially from the front you know we've got this honeycomb style grille and just a few little touches that the owner has done on this one so far is we've got the headlight brows as you can see the ST badge which obviously comes as standard I kind of like the graphite grey wheels and it's got a nice little stance on it. We've got a Team Heco wind deflectors. We've got a Maxon design like spoiler extension. And as you can see from this, and this is not, this hasn't been bought and just stuck on. This is um, a Mount Tune car. Or should I say, uh, it's had the Mount Tune upgrades on it. It's had the MP215 package, which is like the base package uh, that Mount Tune do for these cars. So it produces 200, now produces 215 horsepower, so level 182. So if we have a quick look into the heart of the beast, um, there's not really a lot to see actually, because it's a standard engine. As I say, it's a 1.6 litre, it's turbocharged, um, but it does have the MP215 package on it. And that consists of a boost pipe, an air filter, and a remap. As I said, taking it to 215 brake, which, um, Ford should have really done with this car uh, as standard. They should have made it around the 200 brake mark. So that's the heart of the beast. As I said, there's not much to see. While we're, on the, while we're here and we're stationary, let's go and take a look on the inside and uh, see what's going on there. Because I do have a few gripes with what's going on in the inside. So the first thing that did strike me when I got in the car was the Recaro seats. I have to say, uh, like half leather, half Alcantara, they are very comfortable indeed, but the only thing I can't quite get right was my seating position. It feels like um, my legs are up like that at an angle. It kind of reminds me of like the old early days of the Renault Sport, the Renault Sport Clios and that, the way their seating position was. And I have pumped the seat up and down, moved it backwards and forwards, but I still can't find a position that's really quite comfortable for me. But the overall support, the bolster support and the leg support and all that is brilliant and it is quite a comfortable seat. So there is one thing my biggest gripe is, uh, apart from the seating position, this uh, centre console layout and just the whole dash layout and all that, it, it looks, not the layout so much, but uh, how it looks aesthetically. It looks very cheap and plasticky. Um, personally, it doesn't bother me because I've been driving Japanese cars for most of my life, so I'm used to cheap and plastic interiors, but the price that these cars are new and the price that they're still fetching now, second hand, mm, is a bit of a letdown really, but that still does not take away the excitement and enjoyment from driving these cars. Let's get rid of these bloody keys, gonna do my head in. Right. First two gears are restricted, but once you go into third, <laughs> you little ripper, you, you little ripper. Yeah, she pulls good, man. It feels quite talky as well. If I, if I had to compare this to the 180 brake um, Fiesta, uh, if I had to compare this to the 180 brake Eco Boost I drove, it's a totally different league. This feels really talky. I mean, I'm in fifth gear now, 4,000 revs. And you can just see it, feel it pulling and pulling and still pulling. Yeah, it's all right, man. So yeah, um, 
been driving this car for about 20 minutes before I started the video just to get a little feel for it and one other gripe it's a big gripe for me actually is um, the sound now it's artificial sound in car um, it sounds it sounds the nuts actually it sounds really good it sounds quite throaty and quite deep I don't know if you'll be able to hear this sounds all right but then when you listen to the real sound outside the window cue the exhaust shot it's quite disappointing <laughs> but never mind that's just the way that the modern cars seem to be going these days by artificially giving you the sound through the speakers which I don't really agree with, to be honest with you, but hey, it is what it is, and if it's selling cars, it's selling cars, isn't it? Now, another gripe of mine is the electric steering. It feels really heavily dampened, and I'm not getting any feedback, or not getting as much feedback from the road as I would wish. I don't know if that's something that can be mapped out, Maybe you guys who are more experienced and have more knowledge about the Ford platform than what I do because I'll be honest with you, my knowledge on the Ford platform is weak. My Ford game is weak. Can you? Can this be mapped out so you can get a lighter steering and it feels more balanced and you know you can feel more, you get more feedback from the road about what's going on. But yeah, that's my only couple of gripes really about uh, the actual performance of this car. But other than that, yeah man, she's a little ripper mate, she rips. I need to put to you guys first one is how far can you push this engine uh, without having to go forged so can you get above the 300 brake mark in these without having to forge the internals and secondly the owner of this car his insurance to me seems quite high but he's below 25 it's his second year of driving and this is his second car so he's only got one years of no claims bonus to go on the car but the insurance seems quite high to me maybe that's just because I'm an old git and um, I paid my dues kind of thing but um, if you're below 25 and you own one of these cars drop something in the comments to let me know how much you're paying for insurance now the suspension on these things is really stiff and you will feel every single lump and bump so if you're going to be driving one of these cars and you've got false teeth, just make sure you keep your mouth closed. Otherwise, you might be losing a few sets of teeth. I don't know if you realise, but I do see these STs all over the place. Now, it is a really, it is a really popular little car. And do you know what? After driving this one, I can see why. <laughs> and also, you've got that kind of like Ford reliability as well, because um, they're made over here as well. You know, the parts are quite cheap to get. Uh, quite easy to maintain so yeah it has to be a good little shout guys for you lot who are just getting into your hot hatches and all that uh, let's tea has to be the way to go so guys i hope you enjoyed the quick little quick fire review and i will be seeing you lot again on the flip side so until then travel safe and peace out yeah, hey yo, I'm feeling blessed. Now sit back and observe days I used to ride bikes. Tags in the curve, swerve through traffic. Headphones on, we still matic. I'm lyrically inclined, push balls like I'm lifting.